I don't even know where to begin right now. They always say, never meet your heroes. Well, today, that's exactly what we're doing. Meet the 1995 RX-7 twin turbo. Oh yes, are you guys ready? <laughs> because I am. Now, before we drive this legendary vehicle, we have to talk about the legendary power plant inside it. This is a 13B rotary engine. This is the twin turbo variant of this vehicle. Now, if you guys want this vehicle, by the way, it is actually for sale. So there is a link in the description box as well. If it's not up at this point in time when the video releases, it will be shortly. So just check back. Uh, so if you want to get your hands on this vehicle, you can. This is in Australia, by the way. It is where I live. I am not Australian, as you can tell. Uh, but I am very, very excited to test out what this car felt like in the 90s. And maybe how it compares to something today. 255 horsepower. Let's go. Now, this car is very, very, very small traditional 1990s sports car really tight cabin um, I love the bubble feel though I actually really enjoy feeling like I'm in the car not necessarily sitting on top of the car like a lot of current sports cars are this is stock this is bone stock guys stock exhaust stock everything so I'm very very excited about that now before we get started with the drive a few things that you guys should know this car is still being worked on and, and you know tidied up with that being said, obviously there's no stereo, but I don't need one. Uh, and there's no air con, which is why the window is down or I will die in here. It's a little warm today and humid here in Brisbane. So hopefully that's okay. I got my dead cat on, so we should be all right. I haven't driven a car from the 90s since the early 2000s. So again, I almost forgot what it feels like to drive a car that isn't really aided by technology. And the cars that it was competing at the time against was significantly lighter than. Uh, I think the 3000 GT was about a thousand pounds heavier than this car. Um, so, which is kind of ironic because the car that I drive now, a C43 AMG is about a thousand pounds heavier. So I'm actually curious to see like, is it around the same speed that I would get even though it's underpowered by 130 horsepower? But because it's a thousand pounds lighter, I'm so excited. Are you guys ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's get the thing rolling. Uh, camera's too hot, but so the camera got too hot. So I gotta figure out where to put this thing to where it doesn't boil. I was like, considering it being an action camera, I would assume that it would be able to handle heat, but I guess not. I guess it's just too hot sitting on the dashboard. Okay, <laughs> I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> I am so okay with that. Oh man, just the sounds that it makes too, like the, how the engine builds is really interesting. Porsche, it was a 911. You heard that, I think it was singing. I just wanna open this up. I wanna open her up, man. It's a little cooler there. So maybe, maybe that'll hold it. Let's try that. Hopefully it'll stay, we'll find out in a second. Who's betting? You think that's staying or not? <laughs> you think it's falling? I think it might fall, but we're about to find out in a little bit. When it's moving, it feels really good. Like the, the shift engagement is awesome. I'm not mad at it, guys. I'm not mad at it. Obviously, you have a lot of tire noise for sure. But overall, like, I'm not upset at it.
bro, this feels so good. Like it's not super, super fast, but again, that might just be, you know, me not being able to fully open it up because I'm only getting to about 5,000. Like it's not like I'm really ringing this thing out. It has so much more to go. So I'm just like, ooh, I just want to get into higher RPMs and see what we can actually do. Oof. It's feeling good, guys. I really do wish I had more turns through here, though. I mean, this thing pulls. It's actually kind of quiet at idle. Like, it doesn't idle rough. Idle's really smooth. I keep missing the freaking third gear. Third gear, I keep missing. Oh, but it pulls really nice. Pulls really nice. The, the actual steering wheel, though, I like a lot because it's not thick. It's actually really thin. I'm not a fan of the thick steering wheels. Like, I thought I was liking them. And then now that I have this smaller steering wheel in your hand, it's like, man, this feels so much better. I know I'm not saying a lot. And I, I want to drive it more because I'm just like stoplight to stoplight. But holy shit, guys. Like, just from what I've been able to experience thus far, it just feels good. And these seats are awesome. Like, they're not super bolstered or anything like that, but they're comfortable. But the shifter engagement is, is great. The clutch isn't super heavy either. I really wish I knew exactly where I was going because then I can just find where I was at before. Like, I don't remember the street that I came down because it was literally like farmland. I was like, oh, this is perfect. But I can't find it. <laughs> I can't find it. I mean, if this indicator is correct, I was about to be at E. I put like $30 and I'm at half tank. Is that correct? <laughs> I'm not sure how efficient these engines are for fuel economy. $30 half a tank sounds pretty interesting to me. <laughs> Again, it could be a really small tank at that, but. Oh, the turning circle. Oh, guys, <laughs> guys, <laughs> guys, this is so good. It's so good. It is so good. Oh, I think it's because it's so small, like it's not a ton of power, but it feels awesome. And just revving it out feels incredible. Like just to see the revs climb is like, ooh, <laughs> That's exciting. I just don't know how fast I was going. Let's just say I was doing the speed limit. You know what I'm saying? I'm just trying to express the feeling that I just had because it's not like, because again, I have a, a, C, a C43 and the way that that delivers power is very different from how this delivers power. Obviously that is a four wheel drive, even though it's rear wheel bias four wheel drive, this is rear wheel only, but the car is so light. So the, the, the back wants to step a little bit, right? Um, but it's not, it's not unmanageable, right? It's, it, it doesn't feel like it's gonna just go. At the same time, there is a nice, a very nice thrust that it gives you. And it's not overbearing, it's enough, it's enough. You know, I think that's something that nowadays we get so excited about cars with 500 plus horsepower and it's like oh my god but when you have enough horsepower and the body is light enough you know i have nothing to really compare it to from that era and comparing it to cars from this era it's really hard to do so because they're they're so they're almost a different type of product you know like they're not really the same thing you know they're very computer driven and things like that so it's really hard to I guess, button down what to compare it to. But I'll tell you one thing, it 
there is a there is a enjoyment about sitting in the car this size and rolling the gears. There's just an enjoyment about it. Like I can't I can't tell you specifically what it is that makes it feel so damn good to drive. But it feels incredible. It feels super enjoyable. That's I mean that's really the only thing I can really say about it. You know, like if I had a better word for it I would, but I think if anybody is a real car, sports car enthusiast, and you have access to drive a car like this, I think you should. I think you should. Just because of the fact that it feels something like, something like this, like you can't get now. You can't buy today. It doesn't exist today. I think the closest car that exists to this would be the FRS twins or the 86 twins, the 86 and the BRZ. It's the only thing that I can think of that would be remotely close to this um, as far as weight and power, right? Especially the newer version is definitely a bit more powerful than the last generation of it. But this feels nothing like cars that, you know, are around today, that are available today. Oh, I could, I could do that all day. I could do it all day. Now, I know a lot of you guys are probably gonna be like, oh, I wish it had a better exhaust note. And fair, you know, I mean, you can get aftermarket exhausts for the car, you know, to make it sound the way you may want it to sound. But I'm fully okay with it not making crazy noises and pops and bangs, like I'm okay with that. I know some people really want it to be loud and obnoxious and, and while there's a place for that, and I, I am so with that, uh, there is also a part of me that really loves the subtlety of this car, even though, I mean, it's a sports car, right? It's small, it's nimble. Um, like it's, it's rough, but it's not A45 rough. Like I had an A45 prior to my C43 and this car feels more comfortable, arguably more dailyable. Is that a word? Dailyable? more dailyable than than my my A45 to be completely honest with you oh guys it's so good it is so good i want to know what other cars you guys want me to drive and if you guys are watching this from Australia, what cars are in Australia that we didn't have in the States? I mean, there's tons of like, you know, almost all the Holden products, you know, there were some offshoot of Pontiac, but they are their own thing. So like, should I drive some of the cars that were from here as well? Please let me know. Um, but this is, this is an experience. It's definitely bumpy. <laughs> it's a bumpy experience. But man, like, the car just doesn't feel like it's getting away from me. It just doesn't. Oh. 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 Oh my God. Oh my God. The steering. Oh my God. <laughs> Oh my God, holy shit. And keep in mind, these are not on, this is not on a crazy set of tires right now, guys. This is not like on no Michelin 4Ss. There's no Pirellis on here. Oh my God, did you guys, oh. Just wow, <laughs> just wow, guys. Oh. If you have an opportunity, that's all I gotta say. If you have an opportunity, please go out and find somebody with an FD. Drive it. You will not be disappointed. Now, if I can get another, uh, somebody else's RX-7 that's down there, please let me know. Oh, 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 oh my God. Oh my God. Oh. 
<laughs> oh my god guys oh Just wow. Wow. Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. Guys, it's so good. Look at that. Look at that. What is he doing? Oof. 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 Oh. Oh. Yes, all day, all day, all day, yeah. I need one of these, I, I just, I need one. I need one so bad. I cannot tell you how bad this needs to be in my garage. Hopefully, everything that I've been expressing through this video has come across in some way, shape, or fashion, whether it be through the audio, I know there's a lot of road noise and wind noise, but I would have died if I had the windows up while I was driving. But I wanna know your guys' thoughts. If you've driven an FD, what are your thoughts on this vehicle? Um, if you haven't, where does this one rank in your list of, you know, let's call them, uh, let's call them grails, right? Let's call them heroes. How does it rank amongst the cars that you may want to drive one day, may want to have one day? Where does it rank for you? Let me know. Uh, and if you guys would like me to continue the series uh, with a particular car, please let me know what car. And if you have a car that you would like me to drive here in Australia, I would love to experience it. Me being in the States, growing up in the States in the 90s, we only had access to certain cars because of emissions and safety regulations. So, so I think for me, like having the ability to drive this car here uh, is, it's a dream come true. It really is. Like, I don't know what else to say, but it's incredible. It's an incredible experience. I'm extremely grateful for the opportunity. And like I said, if you guys have cars that you would like me to, to drive, an experience for the first time, please let me know. <laughs> please let me know. But we're gonna wrap this thing. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.